My name is Daniel Da, and this is my colleague, uh, Webaf. We're from Hortonworks. And today, we are going to talk about the uh, Hive Metastore improvements, which is the edge-based Hive Metastore. So uh, the first, we want to talk about what's the motivation for the edge-based Metastore. Why do we want to create this, this, this project? Uh, let's first uh, spend one minute on what is Hive Metastore. So, um, Hive Metastore stores the metadata about the data. Uh, our real data is sitting on the HDFS, and uh, usually people want to organize the real data into database, table, and part uh, partitions, because that's the familiar terms if they uh, use the, uh, get used to the RDBMS before. And besides uh, the database table partitions, there are also other information about data, uh, which is not the data itself, such as privilege, roles, uh, permanent UDF, statistics, logs, transaction, et cetera. So for all those information, which is not the data itself, we put it into Hive Metastore. And Hive Metastore can run in two modes. One is the threat of the server mode, uh, which is the standalone server. Uh, which can serve multiple uh, clients simultaneously. And the other mode is called embedded mode, uh, which run in process of the client process. And uh, uh, it, it will work as a library. Um, currently, Hive Metastore supports the RDBMS as the backend. So uh, currently, we support five most popular RDBMS, which is Derby, MS SQL, MySQL, Oracle, and Postgres. So let's talk about why the load latency in Hive becomes so important. Traditionally, uh, we know Hadoop is good for large job. So if your job is small, probably it's not a good idea to run it on Hadoop, because uh, running on the RDBMS is more efficient. Uh, however, uh, if we look at the reality, things are quite different. Let's take a look at this example, which is the TBC DS query 27. So uh, for this Hive job, uh, it can be decomposed into seven stages. The first stage is quite large. And uh, after the first stage, after we uh, pruning and filter uh, the input, the rest, of seven, the rest of six stages become very small. And it is impossible to tell the user just run the first stage on Hadoop and all the rest in the other system. So we have to uh, handle both workload. So if we look at the recent development of Hive, we can find uh, the hottest development area is around the low latency. So uh, we did a Stinger project, which is a combo name for TES, ORC, plus vectorization two, three years ago. The goal of that project is to bring down the average query time uh, for the analytical query to five to 10 seconds. And uh, the current uh, development in Hive is focused on the AAP, which we try to use the, uh, which we try to cache the data inside the memory. So uh, we can bring down the query runtime to sub second. In the before, uh, when your Hive job runs several hours, the query planning time is not a problem. So, uh, but now, uh, since we, uh, we are bringing down the query runtime to sub-seconds, things change completely. If we take a look at this breakdown of query 27 runtime, we can see 27% uh, of runtime is actually spent on the uh, query planning, which is no longer negligible. We need to improve this. And uh, uh, we have other goals beside the low latency for the high edge based Metastore project. Uh, the most important thing is we want the scalability. Uh, when uh, we, uh, in, the, in the before, uh, the high Metastore usually is small. Uh, but when people put more and more data into Hive, uh, things will change. So uh, the Metastore is, no, uh, it, it, it is sometimes not small. We see quite a few customers actually have millions of partitions inside one single Hive table. 
and that put a lot of pressure on MySQL Server. So we need to scale our database backend. And uh, once we have a scalable database back backend, this also opens a door to tons of performance optimization. Because um, in the before, uh, only the front end will access the meta store, and the task node will not access the meta store because we think MySQL cannot handle the load. And now with the edge based meta store, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we, we can do that. And the one such performance optimization we are currently doing is to put the ORC raw group stats into the edge based meta store. So um, every task node will write the raw group information to the meta store. And when we try to generate the splits, we will do a point lookup in the edge based meta store, uh, which will make things uh, faster significantly. And the other The other goal for the edge-based meta store project is to reduce the complexity. So the object, meta, uh, the object store is currently very complex. Uh, we have, for every meta store invocation, we have to go through the OR mapping, and uh, we have to uh, rely on quite a few third-party uh, uh, library, such as data nucleus and all kinds of connection pools. And uh, those third-party library always give us trouble. And this is a ER diagram for the object, uh, object store database schema, it just to show you how complex things, uh, things are uh, currently. And the other questions uh, people frequently ask is, is that possible to achieve those goals by improving the object store? Uh, the question is somewhat, and uh, it's already happening. Um, so during the last several months, there are quite a few changes, improvements put in the object store. Uh, what they do is they try to use direct SQL instead of the OR to, uh, for the most meta store API call. Uh, you will see the code looks like uh, the picture. So. It is possible, but the maintenance will become a nightmare. And uh, also, uh, we need to handle the syntax difference between these different databases manually, uh, which is quite painful. So it is possible for the performance improvement in the object store, but the re-engineer re effort may not pay off. And uh, even we decide to live with object store, eventually we cannot achieve scalability. So the scalability is the inherent barrier built into the RDBMS. Um, and that's why the uh, NoSQL database becoming so popular. So next, I will hand over to Weber to talk about the system design and the caching st strategy. So I'll go over the system design and the caching strategies uh, we are using in the Edge-based Metastore project. Uh, so to begin with, uh, the, this is the uh, architecture of the overall system uh, which, uh, uh, with the edge-based meta store factored in. So we don't plan to get rid of RDBMS as of now. Uh, as shown in the diagram, both code paths will live uh, for a while. And uh, so basically how the edge-based meta store is implemented is uh, by implementing, so we have a raw store uh, API, which is basically, uh, which basically defines the API used to read or write from the backing data store. So the ORM layer implements uh, that API in the object store class, and the edge-based meta store uh, implements the uh, API in the edge-based store class. Uh, we also have a transaction manager uh, for edge-based called OMID. Uh, most of the uh, calls, uh, most of the reads and writes to HBase will go through the transaction manager, but for some of the uh, you know, read-write, we plan to bypass it when not required uh, for purposes of uh, efficiency. So I'll just walk you through the RDBMS uh, read-write path, just a, 
just to give you an example of uh, what happens when uh, you write something to the RDBMS. So basically, the Metastore client, which is a thrift client, uh, creates a thrift payload based on the API specs. Uh, it, uh, so after the RPC, the server side extract, uh, gets the thrift payload and extracts uh, various elements from the RPC payload. It then opens up an ORM transaction uh, and then writes to different uh, backing tables in the RDBMS. So just as an example, adding a new partition, this is the partition uh, structure which the client sends to the server. Uh, or, uh, uh, and then the server extracts uh, data from it and stores to several of these backing RDBMS tables. Uh, actually, I'm missing some of the tables here. So it's, it's actually a, quite, a, a, quite a lot of work on the server side uh, in the RDBMS world. In comparison, uh, this is the HBase uh, schema for the HBase Metastore uh, project. It, this has about 12 to 13 tables as of now. Uh, I'll just highlight some of the key tables uh, in the schema uh, and some of the key design factors. So one of the key things that uh, HBase gives is denormalization. Uh, so most of the table design is optimized for faster querying, uh, which essentially is what we are look, uh, looking at as a design goal uh, to speed up the query compile time. This may, in, in some cases, come at the cost of you know, slower DDLs. So for example, a drop uh, roll call on the edge-based meta store will have to uh, scan this entire user to role mapping table to find a role and you know, drop it. Another uh, uh, kind of highlight is the partition. So if you look at the partitions table in the Edgeway schema, uh, so a lot of uh, you know, uh, calls for retrieving metadata related to partitions, uh, they are very frequent during the query compile time. So basically, the key here is uh, a, you know, a, val a byte array, which is uh, you know, comprised of database name, table name, and partition values. And uh, there are two column families, one which stores the data and the other statistics. So, so with the uh, kind of key design we have, uh, most of the queries to the HBase, uh, to HBase will basically end up being uh, range scan queries, is what we figured. Uh, for the queries which don't go into the range scan, we have implemented a server-side filter which uh, as you can see, we'll uh, basically run a filter on HBase and return. We also support typed partition keys, and the typed partition keys are implemented using binary sortable survey. And again, you can run rain scan and uh, you know, filter-based scans uh, on the server. So another. Uh, uh, issue with the older RDBMS uh, design was that for each partition, there is a storage descriptor uh, which we store in the meta store. Uh, and that storage descriptor essentially uh, defines properties which are related to how the partition is stored on the file system. So in the old, uh, so in the RDBMS world, what would happen is that whenever you would materialize a partition object in memory, you would pay the penalty of creating a storage descriptor, uh, storage descriptor for each of the partition objects. So if you have like thousands of partitions, uh, you would end up being, you would end up creating these storage descriptor objects, which, as you can see, have a lot of common things which can be factored out into, uh, you know, a common object and uh, thereby reducing the memory footprint. So in the edge-based metastore world, we have done that. So Basically, uh, the, this is the uh, uh, storage uh, descriptor in the edge-based metastore world. So now the partition object only stores a hash value to the storage descriptor. So that kind of optimizes uh, the memory usage. So as an example of a read-write path in the edge-based world, what we now do is uh, the client again sends a thrift RPC message to the server. Uh, the server extracts 
uh, fields from the thrift RPC stub and creates a, a protobuf object, which essentially is what gets serialized into the tables. So this is what uh, the same sample query of adding a partition does. Uh, uh, the, on the left side is the thrift structure, and uh, then uh, the server extracts and creates a protobuf structure and then stores it to uh, the relevant tables. So another thing that we have uh, been looking at is uh, uh, implementing some caching uh, in the edge-based Metastore. So uh, um, mostly there are, uh, as of now, we are, uh, we have three caches in the edge-based Metastore. So one cache is for aggregate stats. Uh, so during query compilation, uh, a lot of components need access to aggregated statistics for a particular column over a whole number of partitions, uh, which turns out to be quite expensive. Uh, we store this in the, on the edge base, uh, uh, on edge base itself. Uh, and as Daniel pointed out previously, uh, with edge base, now what we can do is uh, have the tasks uh, communicate with edge base during runtime to retrieve certain information. So specifically, we have a file footer cache on edge base. Uh, which helps in uh, optimizing split calculations and predicate pushdowns to file level. And then we have uh, some basic uh, statistics for, you know, uh, sorry, basic caches for table partitions, storage descriptor objects, uh, which is basically uh, the duration of this, these caches is uh, for one particular query. So look, taking a look at the uh, statistics cache, so one of the most expensive calls in on the Metastore is getting the aggregated statistics uh, for a uh, bunch of partitions for a bunch of columns. Uh, so what we have done is uh, we have defined a table on edge-based Metastore, uh, which has the row key, uh, 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 which basically is a hash of uh, database name, table name, and partition values. And on the storage, uh, and what we store there is a protobuf, uh, uh, is two protobuf objects. One is for uh, the aggregated statistics, and the other is a bloom filter, which helps in lookup when we want to evict, uh, you know, stale cache nodes. So basically, during the lookup, what we do is just uh, calculate the hash for the key and then store the uh, aggregate statistics object if it is not there in the cache. And during uh, invalidation, for example, uh, when an alter partition, drop partition, or an analyze table is called, uh, what we do is we uh, uh, compare against the Bloom filter, which is stored uh, for that particular statistics, and walk the entire table and uh, find uh, stale nodes and evict those. And uh, as mentioned before, uh, for uh, speeding up split generation, we save uh, all file footers in a cache, and uh, we also save some statistics which help in uh, predicate push down to the file system level. I think Daniel will now talk about uh, the transaction map. Thanks, Baba. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, let's talk about the transaction management. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, let's talk about the transaction management. So edge-based Metastore needs transaction. So uh, we, uh, for example, if we create a table or create a partition, we also need to create the storage descriptor accordingly. Those two operations need to be atomic. It is required. But edge base don't support transaction. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, actually, it doesn't support cross-row transaction. Uh, fortunately, there are a bunch of other projects coming up to address this issue. And uh, in edge base meta store design, uh, we have a layer which actually can support a different transaction manager. Um, and uh, currently, only Omid transaction manager is supported. And let's take a look at Omid. 
OMIT is a transaction layer on top of HBase. It is initially designed and developed by Yahoo, and uh, it is re recently taken into Apache Incubator a couple of months ago, and uh, on this Monday, they made uh, their first Apache release. And uh, OMID is using snapshot isolation to implement the transaction. It is uh, not surprising, because the HBase is a version of the database, and the implement transaction, um, in, in implement snapshot isolation on top of version of the database is quite uh, natural. And uh, OMID don't use any locking, so for both uh, read and write, you can just uh, just do the operation without waiting. And if two concurrent transactions is conflict, uh, the, first, uh, the first transaction get committed and the second one get aborted. And uh, in our experiment, uh, the overhead of our mid layer is quite low, so it doesn't add too much pressure compared to use HBase alone. So uh, the most important components inside OMID is called the TSO server, which stands for the timestamp oracle. Uh, so for every transaction, TSO server will generate a unique transaction ID, and uh, it maintains the status of the transaction. Um, in more detail, it maintains the uh, transaction uh, data, uh, data structures. And uh, for the client, they, instead of talking to HBase client, they talk to the TSO client. And TSO client will talk to both HBase server and the TSO server. And the TSO client will also cache some of the uh, transaction metadata locally. So for most read transactions, it doesn't need to go to the TSO server. It can just read from the HBase and use the local cache to figure out which is, the recent, which is the right version the transaction should read. And OMID also have a component inside HBase. Uh, it, it is a compactor run as the HBase uh, coprocessor. So what it does, it will remove the stale cell versions from HBase. So there are four major uh, operations for OMID. When you, uh, when you open a transaction, it simply asks TSO server to generate a unique transaction ID. When you read a cell, it will uh, read all the versions of this cell from edge base, and uh, using the transaction met metadata to figure out what is the latest committed version before the transaction starts. And why? When write a cell, it simply write a cell uh, to edge base version by the transaction ID. And uh, at the commit time, it will submit the request to the TSO server. And TSO server uh, is able to figure out whether there's conflict in this transaction. So we talk about the TSO server maintain the transaction met metadata. Uh, so there are three major data structures inside TSO server. Uh, the last committed table, this is a table uh, for every row and its uh, most recent commit timestamp. And uh, this, table is, uh, this table is used to detect transaction conflict at the commit time, and it can glow very huge. And the other two data structure is called the committed table and uh, aborted table. Those are needed to construct the read snapshot at the read time. And uh, both tables are partially replicated to the TSO client. So in the, most of the time, the read operation will not go uh, to the TSO to check about the transaction metadata. And since the last committed table can go large, so it is possible TSO server will run out of memory because of that. What OMID does, is uh, they have a limit on uh, they have a limit uh, on the memory usage of this table. If uh, last commit table use more memory, uh, OMID will abort all the transactions um, to reclaim memory. So uh, 
Amid will not run out of memory because of that. And the, uh, uh, when transaction conflict happens, Amid will through exception. So the upper layer will need to deal with that properly. So it is possible for uh, two uh, meta store call modify the same table, same partitions at the same time. So if that happens, uh, we need to uh, implement the retry logic properly because uh, that doesn't mean the transaction will not go through. It just means somebody is doing the transaction right now. You need to wait and retry. And the other uh, case which transaction conflict will cause trouble is the task node write. So for a task node write, every node will write uh, at almost the same time. So um, it is possible to cause more transaction conflict. For example, if we write the org for the cache, uh, every node will invoke this API call called put file meta data. So it is basically a list of rows it needs to uh, update. For edge base, the, uh, the raw mutation is automatic, is atomic. So that's not a problem. But uh, between rows, uh, we can see in this particular meta store call, uh, it doesn't have any relationship. So we don't have to protect the, uh, this API, uh, the meta store call, inside the transaction manager. OK, uh, let's talk about the deployment. Um, for the HBase meta store, there are two server components need to deploy into HBase. One is the server-side field filter, and the other one is the omid compactor. So uh, you simply need to copy those uh, needed jars into the HBase lib. And there is one uh, new config entry in HiveSiteXML. So uh, you can leave it so uh, Hive will use the original object store. And uh, also, you can uh, specify to use the new edge base store. And if you decide to use Omid, uh, you need to deploy Omid as well. So first step, you need to create Omid tables in edge base. Uh, so here, we list the two command line to create both tables. And then you need to start Omid TSO server. And uh, then you need to change the config entries in hive.siteXML to tell Hive uh, the HBase meta store will be protected by Omid. And you need to tell Hive how to look for the Omid server. And there are two ways to instantiate the uh, database schema for HBase meta store. If you start from scratch, you can use the HBase meta tools to create empty tables for the HBase meta store. And if you already have an object store running and you want to migrate the data from object store to HBase store, you can use the HBase import tools to do that. So what it does is a one-time deal. So you migrate it from object store and to the HBase store, and that's done. So you cannot do the reverse import, and also you cannot do the incremental uh, import afterwards. So let's uh, show some experimental result. And this diagram shows the, uh, the, the query planning time for the TPC DS query. Uh, please note, this is not a random object store we compare with. This is the object store. Uh, heavily uh, optimized by our performance engineer, and it has all the code optimizations we did in the recent couple of months. And uh, for the fact table, it has less than 2,000 2, partitions, so it's within the range of the sweet spot of RDBMS. So even with this setting, uh, edge based store still are significantly faster than the object store. The average speed up for the edge based uh, meta store is, uh, is more than twofold. And also in this diagram, we can see the overhead of Omid is very minimal. 
So uh, the runtime is almost the same uh, with and without omit. Okay, uh, so let's quickly go through the future work. First, let's review the current status of HBase Metastore. So the HBase Metastore branch is merged into master uh, half a year ago, and it is turned on it is turned off by default currently. And uh, we already achieved uh, uh, the feature parity uh, for the HBase meta store compared to the object store. Uh, however, there are some minor holes, something like event notification, version, and constraint uh, are not there. So we need to fix those minor holes. And uh, for the API calls, such as list table name by filter, uh, those will take the JDO filter as the input, which is not relevant to the HBase store. So we probably will deprecate those. And also uh, for the HBase import tools and the HBase meta tools, there are several missing features, like the, it will not import the privileges. Uh, we will need to uh, complete that. And uh, currently, uh, you can run most end-to-end uh, -end queries uh, with HBase meta store. And we are currently fixing unit tests. The test mini test CI drive, it's all passed. And uh, for the more complete test suite, uh, which is test CI drive, uh, we almost fix all of them, and the patch is pending review. However, it is not production quality yet. You can try it, you can use it, but expect some bugs. And also, currently, HBase Metastore don't support ACID. Uh, currently, the, 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 the high ACID transaction management metadata <laughs> is, stored in, uh, is stored in the, uh, the database. Uh, it includes locks, transactions, and compactions. So the problem is to denormalize this data structure is harder than uh, the data structure we mentioned before because we are heavily rely on secondary index for that. So the plan is we will improve uh, this transaction layer and we will create a transaction server. So uh, this will solve the denormalization problem and uh, also by uh, putting all the data structure in memory, we will significantly improve the, uh, the throughput for the Metastore. And the other improvement is the HA. So uh, in this work, we introduced two new server. One is the TSO server for Omid, and the other one is the transaction server. So in our distribution, I mean the HDP distribution, uh, we will uh, provide the HA for all the servers. So that we will, incre we, we will increase uh, two, HA serv uh, two, two servers we need to do the HA, which is a significant overhead. So what we are currently thinking of is to uh, implement the automatic HA through HBase coprocessor. What we do is to, uh, to wrap the server in the coprocessor of the HBase. So that will live in the region server of HBase. So if one region server down, the other backup region server will bring up and uh, and the, and the server will automatically uh, started inside the coprocessor. And the next several work includes the stats aggregation improvement, because currently uh, we will retrieve partitioning stats uh, to the client and do the aggregation in the client side. If we put this logic in the coprocessor, we can significantly reduce the traffic uh, between Metastore and the uh, HBase server. And the other improvement is the object cache. Uh, so currently, uh, the object cache is quite, uh, the implementation is quite naive. We want to improve it. At least we uh, need to come up with something uh, like ARU or, or similar. And the other problem we are facing right now is the Omid TSO consume high CPU. So whenever TSO server starts, we will see 300% CPU usage always. So uh, this is actually by design. Uh, the Omic folks, they valued high throughput over uh, the resource usage. So they try to avoid 
context switch by, uh, by the spin lock. However, this, uh, if we, you are, your server is very small, this could be a problem. So we need to come out a solution for that. Um, that's all for today. Uh, so do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because because uh, high as a query engine. Oh, okay. Uh, first, I repeat the question. So his his question is, um, we have bunch of uh, improvements for the scalability to address the scalabilities uh, in the Hadoop, such as uh, such as better ratio. So uh, what do we do in Hive to address the scalability issue? So I, Hive as a very high level uh, application. It has, bunch, uh, uh, it, it has a bunch of bottleneck. So the HDFS is a bottleneck. So we will use the federation as well uh, to address the uh, bottleneck in the HDFS. And also, uh, the, meta the, the meta store uh, bottleneck is living the hive itself. So it's, it has nothing to do with other components in Yang, right? So for this component, we cannot rely on the improvements of Hadoop itself. We have to come out a solution by ourselves. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, are you asking which high version carry this feature, right? Yeah. So uh, since the major code is, uh, is merged last September, so uh, the current release will have this feature. So it's 2.1. 2 I'm not sure if 2.0 also have that, but 2.1 definitely have this. Uh, but we continuously put a lot of fix there. So uh, for 2.1, it's uh, probably uh, you will have a lot of unit test failures, and uh, those will adjust later. So uh, I, 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 I think, but I cannot promise, uh, most fixes we will put in 2.2. So I'm not sure if this is production quality or not, but at least most of the development we're putting into 2.2. So any uh, timeline when it will be production ready? Uh, not, not right now. We are working on that. Thank you. I'm sorry, maybe I didn't follow completely. You showed performance numbers for OMID, uh, sorry, HB, object store, and Plus yeah. Is there an option to run the meta store, the HBase meta store without OMID? Yeah, uh, there's option. There's option there. So it's not necessary you have a transaction manager. But if you want to use it in the production, it is highly recommended. Thank you. So you said uh, use the design and use DynamoDB as the. Uh, so there we have APIs. Uh, I mean, the, so the best way would be to probably implement the API that I pointed out, raw store, and create another implementation of that, which can use uh, probably you know another NoSQL uh, store as the backing store. So, uh, but you can of course you know use a lot of inspiration from the work that has been done on the HBA side. Yeah. So, so it, it is possible uh, because both are key value store, right? So the key design will not change it significantly. Uh, the only big problem is we have server-side filter, and also we have the coprocessor, right? And those uh, is a little bit harder to migrate into DynamoDB. I'm sorry? You said Redis cluster? Redis cluster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not really, sorry. <laughs> not really. Uh, actually, back to my previous question. 
So one of, one of the challenges with, uh, specifically with respect to Metastore is that uh, RDBMS Metastore is that, uh, you know, the task ac access from tasks is, uh, is really something that we can't do right now because of, you know, several tasks, if they launch and access Metastore, uh, you know, to retrieve some caching information, uh, uh, that would be really, you know, put a lot of pressure on Metastore and that is something, uh, you know, as you, like, that can certainly be solved with federation, but I, we feel that this is our, I mean, we already have a component which gives, uh, which is designed for this yeah. particular use case. So, and it's kind of eating our own dog food within the Hadoop world. So, it so yeah. kind of, uh, you know, works out sure. uh, well out of the box in terms of the scalability. Sure. Because if you want the task node to access the meta store, that's, that need all of magnitude improvements for the Metastore, right? So if you just want to break it into two server or four server, it probably still uh, doesn't have And then much. another problem there is uh, implementing all the security, uh, which is already there within the Hadoop cluster with respect to, you know, tasks, talking to HBS, and uh, so in, with a uh, federated structure, we'll have to kind of, you know, think about those aspects as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody.